Hello everyone and welcome to February's Tea Tasting Club. Hope you're looking forward to tasting some really delicious blends with us this month as we open our boxes. We have got our um, Flavour Explorer box, our Gourmet box and our Caffeine Free box to taste with you today. And we've got a bit of a Valentine's kind of love theme going on here. So see if you can recognise some of those themes and trends throughout your boxes. Um, so like I said, we've got three boxes um, and depending what kind of tea drinker you are, you'll be able to use the perfect box for you based on these categories. So if you're a bit adventurous, you like to try lots of different types of tea, you like fruit teas, herbal teas, but you also like black teas and all things in between, then you sound like a flavour explorer to me. So if you are a flavour explorer, then you will want our flavour explorer box, where that's a box we get to experiment lots and try lots of new things. We also have our gourmet box. So the gourmet box is perfect for those who are a bit more of a traditional tea drinker. So that's those of you that love a great British cuppa or that love a builder's breakfast brew or an Earl Grey. That's the kind of box for you. Lots of black teas, a few caffeine frees in there. Um, so it pushes your comfort zone a little bit, but not going too wild. Um, and we also have for our caffeine free uh, tea drinkers, a caffeine free box. So that will include any teas from our herbal, fruit and rooibos collection. So there'll be plenty for you to try there as well. Okay, so we're gonna kick off uh, our February box with the Flavour Explorer box. Um, so first of all, we've got our strawberry Nutella pancakes. We've also got red velvet and we've got love potion, which are three really delicious black teas. Today, I'm gonna to be making a lovely red velvet latte. Um, so let me show you how to do that. I'm gonna start off by taking a brudini. If you don't have a brudini, you could use a little strainer instead, but the brudinis are really, really handy. So I definitely recommend getting your hands on one of these. And I'm gonna make a tea concentrate. So to make a concentrate, you need two teaspoons of tea to about 150 milliliters of boiling water. So one, two, like that, to make a nice strong brew. This tea is really cool because in here we have some beetroot. So this helps to make the tea a lovely bright pink colour. You'll see in a minute for the latte. That's why I love to have this one with milk because it really accentuates that lovely pink colour. This is boiling water because it's a black tea. But make sure you're checking the label before you brew your teas because each tea needs a different temperature brew time. So I'm roughly going to do about 150 to 200 millilitres like that. And I'm going to let that brew for four minutes. Um, so whilst that's brewing, I'm going to talk you through all the lovely ingredients. So starting with red velvet, this is a Sri Lankan black tea as its base. So it's got about medium caffeine, the same as what a great British cuppa might do. We've got the beetroot that I mentioned earlier. We've got cocoa shells, corn flowers, vanilla pieces, and calendula pestles, along with sunflower petals as well. So it's a really pretty, really vibrant blend, great for Valentine's Day. Um, and I know you'll just love it. It tastes as good as it looks. We also have our strawberry Nutella pancakes. So if you are a pancake fan, this is gonna be one you've probably tried before. If not, I just know you'll fall in love with. Make sure you check out our whole pancake collection. We've got a few different pancake teas knocking around at the moment. And in here, we've got the Sri Lankan black tea as the base. And then we've got some cocoa nibs, cocoa shells, and freeze dried strawberries. So the strawberries are so vibrant and so chunky. It is so delicious. Um, and lastly, we've also got our love potion. So this is a lo another lovely Valentine's kind of theme blend. Um, and this one has got some Sri Lankan black tea as well for its base. Um, and it also has cocoa shells, rose petals, freeze dried strawberry. It's got cute little heart sprinkles in there too, which is so sweet. Um, and it's also got some calendula petals and vanilla pieces as well. So really cakey, really delicious black teas, all different themes, um, but all with a bit of a Valentine's thread going through. Okay, so it's been four minutes. You can see that the tea is really starting to infuse into the water there. So I'm just gonna strain our concentrate using the Brudini into our mug. Brudinis are so cool. It works as a gravity steeper. So you lift it up and it stops, sit it down and it pours again. So look at that colour, it's so vibrant. The beetroot is really doing its work. Now don't get put off by the beetroot. I know that you might be thinking that's such a bizarre ingredient to have in a tea, but it doesn't taste of beetroot. It just has that really beautiful effect um, that we want from the tea this Valentine's Day. So we've got some hot oat milk here. You can use any milk you wanted. I'm gonna make this as a latte, so I'd like to add the oat milk to mine. If you wanted to add any vanilla syrup or strawberry syrup, you could do that now if you fancied, um, but it's nice as it, as it is as well. I don't often add syrup to mine. So this is our handheld 
milk and matcha frother. It's finally back in stock after being out of stock all Christmas, which I, for one, am so glad about because I just love this tool. I use it every day. And it takes literally seconds to whisk your milk. It's so handy. So this is some hot milk that I prepared earlier. And all I'm gonna do is add the milk to the concentrate. Are you ready to see that amazing color? Look how lovely that is. It is so pink. It's perfect for like a Galentine's Day or a Palentine's Day as well as Valentine's Day. Something to enjoy with all your friends. Look how vibrant that is. I just know you guys will love it. You need to give it a try. I believe we have a recipe for this on our website as well, so you can check that out. This is so good. It really does taste cakey. Um, and it's got that lovely kind of vanilla-y um, cakey flavor from the vanilla uh, pieces inside the tea. And um, yeah, a little bit of a cocoa hint as well from the cocoa shells. So give this one a try. I know you'll love it. Um, and let's move on to our gourmet box. Okay, so this is our gourmet box. So we've got three lovely teas in here for you to try. Lots of different types of tea, which is lovely. So we've got two black teas and we've got one oolong tea. Um, we've got a coconut milk oolong, we've got tea and toast, and we've got a love potion, which I think we mentioned earlier as well in our flavor explorer box. So today I'm just gonna show you how to make a very simple cup of tea using our coconut milk oolong. I like to just have this as a hot tea. It is an oolong, which means it needs to be brewed at 80 degree temperature water. So you wanna make sure you don't burn the tea leaves by putting in boiling water straight from the tap. So because it's just me, I'm gonna have one. I'm gonna have one teaspoon of the coconut milk oolong in the strainer and then top it up about 80 degree temperature water. Perfect. And I'm gonna let that brew for three minutes. So a little bit different. All tea types need a different brew time and a different brew temperature. So if you're having a black tea or a herbal tea or a fruit tea or a rooibos tea, then you wanna brew at 100 degree temperature water for four minutes. But if you're brewing a green tea, an oolong tea or a white tea, then you wanna make sure you're getting um, 80 degree temperature water for a three minute brew. Great, so let me talk you through a few of these blends whilst we wait for that to steep. So coconut milk oolong, as I've mentioned, is a really interesting tea. So it's a Taiwanese oolong at its base and it also has coconut flakes and desiccated coconut. So it's a pretty simple recipe, but it smells unbelievable. And um, because it's a milk oolong, so milk oolong makes it sound like it might have dairy in it, but it actually doesn't. It just tastes really creamy um, and delicious without actually having any dairy. And it's just the type of tea leaf that it is. The interesting thing about oolong as well is that one teaspoon of tea, you can brew that six to eight times. So plenty of different types of tea to get out of just one teaspoon. You can re-steep it. And that's because all the tea leaves are hand rolled into these little balls. Let me get one to show you. You can see one there, little tiny ball. Then once you steep it, the ball will unfold a little bit more. You steep it again, it'll unfold a little bit more and more and more. So every time it unfolds a little bit more, you get more flavour from that oolong, which is really lovely. Um, we also have our tea and toast. Um, and tea and toast is an Indian Assam black tea, but it also has some Kenyan black tea in there as well. Um, it's also got hibiscus, freeze-dried raspberry, apple pieces, rose hip, and corn flowers. So it's a really vibrant, really colourful tea. And the raspberries look so pretty. It really does smell like just raspberry jam that you would get at home. It's so nice. And last of all, I know we spoke about it already, but I'll just touch on it again, is our lovely love potion. The Sri Lankan black tea, cocoa shells, rose petals, freeze-dried strawberries, little sprinkles, um, calendula petals, and then some vanilla pieces as well such a good blend. Okay, so it's been about three minutes. The coconut milk oolong is lovely and brewed. I'm just gonna take the strainer out. These are really handy as well because the little lid keeps it warm whilst it's brewing. When you take it off, it acts as a nice little table for your strainer so you don't spill water everywhere. There we go, that sits in like that. So as you can see, this is quite a delicate tea. It's quite light in color. It smells so good. This is quite nice to have with a little bit of um, coconut milk as well. I haven't had this tea in so long, but I love it. I always drink it every Christmas. I know it's not a festive tea, but it just makes me feel really festive and cozy and it's so, so good. So definitely give this a try. We've actually got lots of different oolongs. If you're interested in trying the other oolongs, they all have the blue labels. We've got peppermint cream, coconut milk oolong, we've got digesta, we've got um, oolong chai. You have to try them, they're so, so good. 
So now we're on to our caffeine free box. So if you're a caffeine free lover, you like to avoid caffeine or at least cut down a little bit, this is perfect for you because we've got three delicious caffeine free blends. We've got two rooibos teas and one fruit tea. So we've got our blueberry pancakes, we've got our strawberry and pomegranate, and then we've got our lamuga as well, which is another pancake blend. These blends are so delicious um, and you need to try them. They're all very different from each other too. So blueberry pancakes, as you can imagine, is a lovely blueberry blend. Um, we love having it around pancake day. It's got some um, robus as the base, hibiscus. It's got freeze dried blueberry, apple pieces, blackcurrant leaves, rose hip, elderberries, orange peel, corn flowers, and mallow flowers. So it's such a long list of ingredients there. Um, and the great thing about these blends is that they're naturally caffeine free. They're not decaf. So like a black tea, if you wanted to decaf black tea, um, we find that those teas often have to go through some chemical treatment to make them decaf. And even then they still do contain a little bit of caffeine, which is why we like to go for the naturally caffeine free options like the blueberry pancakes for the rooibos, the fruit and the herbal, because they're all elements that will be found naturally caffeine free within nature, which is brilliant. Uh, we've also got our strawberry and pomegranate. This one is so delicious, I love it. It smells kind of like starbursts. Oh, you just need to try it. So fruit tea, so it's got apple pieces, rose hip, hibiscus, sumac berries, freeze dried strawberry and orange peel. So nice. I love to have this one in the summer and make it into ice lollies. Just freeze it into a cup with an ice lolly stick in it. Maybe you want to mix it with lemonade or even with coconut milk. It's so, so good. Last of all, we've got our Lamuga pancakes. So this one's a bit of a funny one. It's only available online actually at the moment. So it's a nice little treat that you get to have it in your tea club. Um, and it's called Lamuga because it's lemon and sugar. So a bit of a funky name there. Um, and this one's also got a rooibos base and it's got coconut nectar sugar and it's got fermented lemon peel with regular lemon peel as well. So it's really lovely and fragrant. I love a lemon tea, but I, I'm not a fan of like strong citrusy lemon teas. I like the more cakey um, lemon teas, like our Moondrop Dreams and our Lamuga. It kind of has like a lemon drizzle cake kind of vibe to it. And I think it's because of the rooibos base. So the Lamuga is interesting because you can make it as a lovely tea latte with some oat milk or coconut milk and it's really nice. Or you can just make it with hot water and it's really nice. Or you can make it a bit differently and have it with some lemonade, um, which is what I'm gonna do today. Right. So I've got a cold brew bottle, I've chosen a pink one because it is love season um, and cold brew bottles are fantastic if you like to have cold tea. So this takes a little bit longer to prepare than what it would be an iced tea, um, but it takes it makes a really intense, lovely, strong flavour. So cold brew bottles are made of glass, but they are dishwasher friendly, so you're safe and sound there. Um, they've got silicon lids and in the top they have a built in strainer that pops out like so and it helps to keep all those pesky tea leaves inside the bottle and not into your mug so that's brilliant um, the only difference between um, cold brewing and um, making an iced tea is time rather than temperature so I'm going to show you how to do that now so with a cold brew you want to use four to six teaspoons of tea so I'm going to use six because I like to have a nice strong one two three, four, five, six, there we go. Six teaspoons of our Lamuga tea. Um, and then you can top it up with any liquid that you like. So that could be uh, tap water, sparkling water, lemonade. It could be milk and have it as a bit of a milkshake. Um, you could use Prosecco, whatever you fancy. So I'm gonna take some lemonade today and just fill it all the way to the top. So as I was saying earlier, it's about time rather than temperature. So once I fill this to the top with the lemonade, I need to let it brew in the fridge for four plus hours, which I know sometimes can feel like a bit of a long time when you just wanna have a cup of tea, but I like to kind of get it in my routine to work to my benefit. So if I'm having, um, if I want a cup of tea of the cold brew in the daytime, I'll get it into my routine that as I'm making dinner at night, I'll whip up a cold brew, pop it in the fridge, so that by the time it gets to the morning, it's ready to go. It's already infused and you can just drink it throughout the day. Or if you wanna have a cold brew um, in the evening when you get home from work, then if you can fit it into your morning routine, making yourself a cold brew, then by the time you get home, it'll be good to go and ready for you to enjoy in the fridge. You can kind of see that this tea is already really infusing into the lemonade. I do find that lemonade helps the tea to infuse really quickly as well. 
So it's been four hours, so it's time to give the Lamuga pancakes a try. So it's been covering in the fridge for all this time with some lemonade. Um, we need to try it and see. I'm just gonna pour in a little bit for a taste. So this one has got the lovely rooibos base, coconut nectar sugar, fermented lemon peel, and lemon peel as well. I love this, it's so good. It's like, a, oh, it's so sour, it's really nice though. It's like having a lemon sherbet almost. You need to give it a try. This is a really nice one to have hot as well, but this is just one of the many fun ways that you can try this. Thank you so much for joining us this February for our loved themed tea subscription boxes. I really hope you enjoyed your teas, whether you got a flavor explorer, a gourmet box, or a caffeine free box. Uh, make sure you follow along with our videos to join us in March um, for our March subscription box. And let us know which one was your favourite and what recipes you're trying. Make sure you're following us on socials and give us a tag. And we will see you next month.